Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 61. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, on the first of every month, we tend to put out this video. I'm recording it really late on July 31st. But anyways, as we go into August, the fair value of the asset class, considered by this red line here, this logarithmic regression trend line fit to all prior data, suggests that it's currently around 4.137 trillion, whereas the actual value of the asset class is coming in at around 3.782 trillion. This represents a slight undervaluation of approximately 8.58%. So negative 8.58%, meaning it's below the fair value or quote unquote fair value uh, by, by about 8.5%. This isn't the first time, you know, this cycle we've been around this level. You can see there's been many times that the, the asset class has kind of come up to that fair value. It did so in March 2024. And then again, it did it in December 2024. You can also see we were back there in August 2022 as well. Uh, so we continue to sort of track that quote unquote fair value not necessarily that dissimilar from, say, the 2016, 2015, 2016 cycle, where we were just below it for a long time. Remember, as long as it stays below it, or even if it just pops above it, as long as it's kind of around that level, then the expectation continues to be that, that Bitcoin will still suck that liquidity back from altcoins eventually. Um, in order to see the asset class go more durably overvalued, then altcoins actually have to join in on the party. And what I mean by that is, you know, what you'll see is you'll see you'll see Bitcoin go up and also follow. And then like Bitcoin won't do anything for a, a week or two. And before you know it, alts are down like 10% on their USD pairs, even though Bitcoin hasn't gone anywhere. And it's just kind of this like this brutal cycle we've been in for a long time. Now, at any given point in the cycle, there's some altcoins that are doing better and they're sort of more leading than lagging. Um, you know, like think back to like 2023, you saw Solana and things around Solana outperform. If you look at like the end of 2024, XRP was doing a lot better. And then if you look at sort of like mid 2025, we see Ethereum and, you know, assets sort of associated with Ethereum doing better. So it's like at, at any given point, we've seen different assets, different altcoins do better than Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is always kind of up there, right? And 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 it goes to show you, you know, just how, how the cycle works. But again, the expectation of the cycles is that we'll spend years undervalued, we can spend years overvalued, and, and sometimes we'll just kind of hug that fair value for long periods of time, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing, right? You know, I mean, normally when you get these insane overvaluations, uh, that's when you have to be a lot more careful because those can certainly lead to, um, you know, those bear markets that we tend to get in the midterm years, right? If you look at the last three major bear markets, it was in 2022 and 2018 and, and 2014. And you can note that we were pretty overvalued with respect to the fair value when those bear markets began, All right? So uh, we'll keep an eye on this. One of the things I obviously like to do a lot is to take the percent difference between the current market cap and you know what this chart considers to be the fair value. And if you do that, you get a chart that looks like this. You can see we've popped our head above the fair value a couple of times and we you know we've been back down to that same level a couple of times here on these pullbacks right the high in terms of the extension from the fair value in march was about the same extension we got in january so march 2024 extension from the fair value was about the same that we saw in december of 2024 right about this almost the exact same and then the drops they had in terms of undervaluation they ended up both being around 30 to 35 percent below you know, sort of the fair value of, of the asset class. Again, nothing we haven't seen before, right? We've seen these types of moves where, you know, you'll see these periods where it'll it'll stay just below the fair value. But again, to in order to get that more durable move to being overvalued, you have to have the altcoin market participate. And um, while it's not impossible for that to happen, uh, you know, in the short term, I would still argue that right now we're more so in the phase of blue chip dominance, right? Like the phase where Bitcoin and, and Ethereum are sucking liquidity from the rest of the asset class, right? And that's why we talk more about blue chip dominance right now. Still think Bitcoin dominance will see uh, another surge, 
potentially starting, you know, but like maybe in a in a month or so, maybe a little bit sooner, but I would say kind of like late August, September, October time frame doesn't necessarily have to go to a higher high, but I, I certainly could see it taking all Bitcoin pairs down a little bit more, even though I, I actually think the low for ETH Bitcoin is in. And, you know, I've had some people say, well, how is it possible that, that Bitcoin dominance could go up while ETH Bitcoin also goes up, right? And, you know, it, it is a fair question, but sometimes when you come across these questions and you're like, well, how is that possible? Just go look at the chart, right? Like what's happened in the last two weeks? Bitcoin dominance is up the last two weeks. Guess what also is up the last two weeks? ETH has been going up against Bitcoin, right? So you have, you know, you had last week, Bitcoin dominance went up. And ETH Bitcoin went up. Now, I guess ETH Bitcoin is slightly down this week so far. But I mean, it does go to show that you can have weeks where both Bitcoin dominance and ETH Bitcoin can go up. Um, and the reason is because, well, the main reason that Bitcoin went up was because alts were bleeding to Bitcoin, not ETH. And alts were also bleeding to ETH, right? So when I said alts were bleeding to Bitcoin, not ETH, what I mean to say is, like, Alts were bleeding to Bitcoin. ETH was not bleeding to Bitcoin. But alts were bleeding to both Bitcoin and ETH. So that when you look at them collectively, Bitcoin dominance... How the hell did we end up talking about this? If you look at Bitcoin dominance plus ETH dominance, you can see that's actually going up quite a bit. Um, getting a nice bounce here off of the 20-week the SMA. Uh, you know, so I mean, just something to keep in mind that blue chip dominance might be kind of the next big narrative. And I, I could see it still lasting uh, a few more months. So, you know, the asset class continues to hover just below uh, that fair value. In order to see a more overvalued, like prior cycles, you need altcoins to join in. I think right now it's still sort of the blue chip phase of the cycle. Um, but of course, we'll, we'll provide an update on this uh, next month. My, you know, my forecast continues to be that the asset class will trend towards a market cap of 10 trillion. Um, that doesn't mean you're not going to get pullbacks along the way. We could even have a bear market between now and then uh, if we don't hit that level before 2026 starts. Uh, but I would say, you know, what I'm more so looking for is an asset class that reaches that $10 trillion milestone, plus or minus a few trillion, right? And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder, what's a few trillion dollars among friends?